But um, last couple of weeks ago over there in Tampa, they just a rainstorm just parked over top of them. And, hey guy, what's up? Hey, How you can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, good. Cool. This is the first time I'm using this app. Oh, neat. Yeah, it's, I'm usually everybody's first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob Jones in the house. BJ. It's Maggie, actually. <laughs> oh, close. Oh, look at Bob Jones over Sorry. there thugging. He's just thugging, man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see his camera too, or what? No. Oh, you guys don't see other people's cameras? Well, I guess since I'm the administrator, I only see that. What's up, Bob? Yeah, I didn't realize my face was going to be right up on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I better I get my – I, I should have shaved. I know. You're over there thugging, man. You look like thug like and easy. Look at that. That's my mom and me. What? I can't see him. Oh, man. Uh, well, the cool thing is that there's going to be a replay on here, so I was looking should show up, I think. I forgot what the settings are, but the audio will at least uh, be there. Oh, there goes Anthony. Oh. Can you still hear me, though? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. You just turned your yeah. video. Oh, okay. oh, hold on. Um, what a hit. Yeah, I've never used it before either. You know how just like it is, you know, with all these damn uh, athletes, they're always showing up to the locker room late. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, hey, can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Okay, good. You just can't see me. I am here on time, suckers. <laughs> nice. That's right. You get points for that. Woohoo! Yeah, so how this, this is going to go, I'm going to wait till we get enough people on here, and then we'll, uh, you know, just kind of engage that way. Not that you guys aren't important, but, you know, you'll cover stuff multiple times. Cool. So any, uh, any laundry we need to cover, Bob? <laughs> no, no. I lost my tent. Which I'm, I've been trying to find for two days. Um, Your what? We had a tent for our trade shows, and the shipping company lost it. So, oh my god, trying to find that. But everything's good. I got a, uh, I got some cool things happening. I got a, uh, an Asian distributor that wants to potentially pick the product up. It distributes a lot of really big brands. That's cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, we've got. Uh, I'm sending product to 7-Eleven. They asked to see the product. So, who knows? That could be cool. Um, hey, guys, do this. Uh, hit, uh, if you're not talking, just kind of hit your mute microphone. It should be like in the left-hand corner or something like that. Just click that. Oh, yeah. off, just click it. Because when we get a whole bunch of people on here, just that background audio will be. Yeah. And uh, what else, man? Um just shipping and plugging away. And Joey Petroli had actually moved out here for the rest of summer to help me out. And he's also bumping around where he's working right now. He works at a restaurant about 20 minutes from here. Cool, yo. Yeah. Um, yeah so I don't know. That's it. Went to Salt Lake City, had a good trip. Can you hear that? My thing bleeping? No, it sounds good. Okay, good. So, yeah. <laughs> We got more people on here. Why do people is show that, up? Is that um, Krista in the top right? Is that? Yeah. Can there. you guys hear? Can you hear me? We got Krista. I can on see here. your your audio is kind of. But uh, how was the go up? I know that you and uh, our boy Blue Man did a good job out there. Yeah. Wait. Can you hear me right now? Yeah, we can yep. hear you. All right. Cool. Yeah, it was awesome. That was my first. That was my first go route, so it was awesome. Just a couple hours away, I guess. That was the first time that the go route until the class that came to New York City. Cool. So I, had a, I had a lot of fun. It was nice to finally like meet another Oral IV member also. <laughs> yeah, great. Hey, again, guys, for the next, there's some people that are on, on their phones, so if you'll just hit the mute button so I don't have to mute you. So that way you guys can unmute yourself and talk when you have a question or want to interact or something like that. Everybody okay. mute you talking. Cool. So you're saying to mute, mute ourselves right now? Well, only if, if you can. Here's what you got to basically do, right? So mute it when you're not Sorry. talking. If you got something to say, just unmute it and talk. 
like JC was over there in a dark room and he was just blowing up the, the, the audio. So he muted it. So he was the one. Not that I would ever rat anybody out like that. You know? Yeah. Who, who's the ghost in the right hand corner over there? Oh, the, I, all I can see is his teeth. Oh my goodness. He's like, <clears throat> he, he, he must think he's like on chat roulette or something like that. <laughs> there he is. It's, it's JC. <laughs> Oh, it, it says my microphone right, is cool. muted, but I. It says my microphone is muted, but can you guys still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Not when it's muted. You'll have I to can... unmute it when you talk. All right, we got Jeremy up in the house with proper lighting. Thank you, Jeremy, for having the proper lighting to attend this event. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Of course, he has. How many got? We got nine people. Um. Yeah, man, we look like uh, the Brady Bunch. It's like we got. <laughs> did you put did you put this also in uh both the ambassadors and the pro area? i did i did okay, cool. right. you can ping over there now and say you know put it in there i put the link in All right. here we can yeah i just said i'm live okay i think some people will be late yeah that's just the way that's you know that's what girls do they show up late uh <laughs> boom boom I got a lot of guys hey, that show up late. I know, so. that was the point. <laughs> oh, Jason's got some light now, man. He, like, paid the electrical bill. <laughs> I'm just in a dark room right now. <laughs> Relaxing. It's actually funny because this time of day, I block all this blue light. I don't normally have all this blue light on, man. I'm, I'm, a, I'm like a light Nazi. I'm, I'm usually at 660 nanometers from 7 o'clock on, so you guys are messing with my circadian rhythm like on here but it's all good, good. scaring me with that talk no it's true man we are beings of light and i saw a difference matter of fact we've got to talk about light tonight and it's in its influence on what's going on with your hydration you all right this picture is kind of freaking me out I'm i dig it man stuff. i like it she's a little hottie she looks like a uh, that's a long time ago like like uh, annette funicello you know when she used to dance on the beach doing that little yeah, that's, hey. that's about the time period, too. <laughs> that's about it. Uh, we were talking about that, actually, the Mickey Mouse Club. Date, my, date myself here. How old are you, Bob? Um, just, just I will time. have my 47th birthday in a month. Oh, cool. Well, I'm 43, oh. man. You know, it's, just, it's the full. Well, I've been drinking oral IV, so I look, I look and, and, and act like I'm 30. It's All great. Right. <laughs> So what's up, Jeremy, over there? Can you, you, can you hear us good, man, and all that? Yeah, I can hear you good, thanks. All right, there you go, man. Got to include you. So I, I just got some other people on their uh, phone numbers. If you're, if you're here, just uh, chime in and say who you are. I know that uh, Chris is here, Jeremy's here, Jace is here, and Anthony's here, Bob and I. Who are you people on these phones? You just like random people from Malaysia? <laughs> There's one, two, three. Um. Me, Maggie from Loma Linda, California. Representing, y'all know who that is? Because I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, Maggie Ligon. Is it Ligon? Lagon? Ligon? Ligon? Ligon. Leaving your ass behind yeah. on the course? Oh, okay. Maggie. No, no. Ligon with a G. <laughs> oh, Ligon? Well, I like that. She's leaking it behind. That's what I'm saying. She's leaving everybody behind. That's All right. All right. <laughs> that is true. Of course, my favorite like mineral, that. magnesium, I call Maggie, so that's all. All right, so who's, who's calling in from the 336 area code? That would be me, Bruce Edwards, Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm actually calling in for my husband who's on an airplane. Oh, right on. Cool. What's your oh, name cool. again? I'm sorry? What's your name? Ruth Edwards. Ruth Edwards. Cool. Husband John. John Edwards is... Uh... Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Nice. Yeah. We're in North Carolina. That's where I'm from. Greensboro. You? Uh oh, oh, I used to get in some trouble in UNCG. Maybe. <laughs> good, good thing they didn't have cell phones and video cameras back then. <laughs> exactly. That's okay. right. Which is why I can't run for office. So I'll just support Trump. That's right. I said it. Oh, all right. No oh. politics on this line. Yeah, look, oh, no politics. Come on, man. Hey, the hydration world is nothing but politics. You know? Don't know. maybe be know. on Gatorade. You know? <laughs> all right, so who's, uh, who's in the 484 mm -hmm. code? 484? That would be me. Sorry, I had to unmute it. <laughs> That's okay. Who's this? Krista. Krista. Oh, what's up? Krista Joy. 
Oh, yeah, so you, she's, got, she's on the phone and on. Okay, cool. Okay, was she dual yeah. boxing? Double boxing? Yeah, I'm, using my, I'm using my phone. Okay. Isn't that what everyone else is doing? <laughs> well, you can use your computer too, but uh, it's fine. You're good. Okay. You just have to drop some oral IV on the keyboard. There you go. That works. And uh, yeah. it makes the keys bigger. It makes the keys bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got, uh, we've got, you know, uh, nine of us on here. What is, no, it's probably 12, but uh, let's go. We'll just wait just a little bit more and then, uh, then I'll kind of, kind of get started. Kind of grooviness. I took my video off so you don't have to stare at me. Nice. <laughs> That's so I'll pop it time. back on after I uh, get a different shirt on, comb my hair. That man scruff was turning me on, man. Yeah, all right. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's just start it up. Start talking to these people. Well, who's got uh, who's got races coming up? I do. Where are you going to be? I'll be in um, New Jersey. Which one? Yeah, I'll be in New Jersey. Yeah, North Jersey. Yeah, I got Virginia this weekend, and then Jersey number okay. also. Yeah, that was Anthony talking. There. I think my next one is September 12th uh, in Orange County. The real yeah, Orange absolutely. County has in, in Florida or the one, the fake one out there in California? Uh, <laughs> Watch yourself. <laughs> uh, that's great. No, I got uh, a too much. Rebel rouser, you know. <laughs> I don't mind it. Hey, so, all right, guys. So tell me about uh, what you're doing. What is your, what let, we're talking hydration strategy. So before I start, you know, proselytizing and kind of breaking down the science and how it really runs, um, I usually like to kind of have a little confab uh, as relates to what the, the, um, the strategies are that people are doing. So my question to you is, is what is your overall hydration strategies? I mean, what, how are you making your decisions based upon what you're doing to come to that? Both what products it involves, volume of water, frequency, that kind of fun stuff. That kind of, and then also, what caused you to have that strategy? That part is really super important. When I work with uh, patients and athletes, I like to elucidate why they're actually doing what they're doing, because that will reveal a lot of stuff. So um, let's pick on the people. I'm going to do some call, you know, some things out. So just because I'm going to pick on the, uh, the, the video people first, because I can see it, but then the other audio can kind of come around. Um, Anthony was on here first. So, uh, yo blue man, what you got? What, tell me what you doing. What's going on? Uh, hydration. I don't know. I drink a gallon a day, uh, take oral IV with every workout. Um, okay. and then on race day, I take it before I take one during the store, my compression sleeve, and then I take one after also. Okay. Um, so that's just water. Correct. Okay. Now are you drinking this gallon on days that you're training and not training? Yeah, I'm drinking a gallon every day. Okay. And so here's the question. Why a gallon of water? Um, I used to do mixed martial arts. And when I was fighting, my instructors always told me to drink a gallon a day. And I've just been doing that ever since. Okay. Now, one of the things I want you guys to do is, is I'm going to give myself a get out of jail free card because I'm not here to bust anybody's chops. But what I want to reveal to you is some of the things like that. So hopefully, now you're all more than welcome to hydrate however the heck you want to do it. I just want to take you to the highest level possible. And that's actually what I do for a living. So um, I understand we all have instruction stuff. I have a strong martial arts background. I used to have one in Virginia Beach, matter of fact. But here's the thing. I can tell you this. I've never met an athlete or someone that I work with that metabolically, physiologically, or biologically requires a gallon of water consumption a day. In the absence of training, because, of course, that adds up depending on what we're going to talk about. But what I have found is, is consuming that much liquid actually impairs performance. And here in just a little bit, I'm going to actually show you guys some of the metabolic testing that I do and some of the things. Um, so that way you can see what I look like, what it looks like. And so you, you know that I'm coming about that. So my recommendation is, is that it's going to be that this is, this is kind of like the, the spoiler alert for, for all things going on anyhow. And that is ad libitum. In other words, when you have a desire to seek fluids, that's when you should drink it, okay? So the thing about it is, is if you are drinking on, on, on some schedule or because you're tracking um, some, 
uh, um, volume. imaginary volume, that's actually incorrect for the body. Now, as far as the powers that be, when they talk about uh, water consumption or things like that, the recommendation is about three and a half liters for men a day. Okay, but like, well, shoot, that's almost a gallon. Well, that's of total fluid volume. Now, that includes everything. It includes coffee, tea, watermelon, leafy greens, chicken breast, medium rare grass fed bison steaks, right? All kinds of lovely and delicious stuff. So for me personally, I weigh 172, okay? And per day outside of, you know, drinking yerba mate, which is my nootropic of choice, I might consume maybe a liter of water. That's it because I eat hydrated foods. Now, one of the things I do with patients is we track their salivary and urine pH, not like most people would actually think, and there's a lot of woo-woo, silly stuff out there about those numbers. But I also do their samples, and I actually put different reagents and little things, and we can take a look at what their uh, nitrogen and urea levels are, and we monitor that, and then I can help them dial in specifically. But as a whole, the take home to not get too techy, right, is that I really do advise against consuming a head of thirst. It affords you absolutely nothing. It does not flush out fat. It does not flush out toxins. It just creates more molecular work for the body electric. Okay. Now, on the caveat, I always do is I say this to all patients. I don't want you to just believe me either. What I want you to do is I want you to personally investigate some of the things that I'm going to encourage you to do so where you can get some other voices and kind of really balance out what your opinion is. But ultimately is always hold yourself out to be a category of one. You are a individual with your own biochemical individuality and genetic uniqueness and your training and your eating and your altitude, geographic location, sleep, wake cycle, and the whole nine yards. So you ultimately do have to be that N equals one experiment. Does that make sense to everybody? You can kind of do yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So, but I can tell you as a clinician who specializes in it, I have found more times than not drinking ahead of thirst and over consumption of water to that amount of a gallon. I call those guys in the gym. I was a trainer for 12 years. I've worked with many, many of folks. I call them the juggernauts. You know, they carry that, that milk jug, you know, it's like this. Look how cool I am with the milk. Yeah. Jug. Or where I come from, a Bubba keg. Yeah. All right. But the thing about it is, is uh, I want you to realize that it waters down the body electric because you can take the same amount of electrolytes in the body, and let's say it's a hundred grams. It's actually pretty close to that. So a hundred grams. But if you have that in a hundred gallons of water, it will not be electrolytically conductive the same as if it was in 50 gallons. Does that make sense? Water it down, okay? That's the way that works. So you have to find that thing. Now, one of the big topics I'm gonna to talk about in here, and then I'm gonna get back to some of the other guys, now that you, maybe I've talked about some stuff, I don't want you to be bashful and telling what you may or may not be doing, is we're gonna talk more <laughs> specifically on that term first, okay? So any questions on any of that I said so far? No. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Krista? How do you what, what's your hydration strategies? What do you do? How do you do it? Hey, Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, which Anthony? All right, Doctor Beck. I should call you anyway. <laughs> it's okay. uh, this is Bob. Um, so, I mean, to me, that might be a shock to some of the people on the phone and on this call because of all the the hundreds and hundreds of articles everything out there that has been developed mostly by Gatorade that you have to drink X amount of volume no matter what and then when you see Camelback do an infogram and it says you're away 200 pounds you better drink X amount of water every single day yeah to give an example that goes along with this is because um, I I've been learning a lot I run the business Anthony created Dr. Beck created it um, my wife drinks a ton of water every day, like more than I think I could consume. Mm -hmm. And she's always, she was always saying she was fatigued and she was tired. And 
we were trying to figure it out forever. So the first bunch of times she took oral IV, she, I think, was looking for more of a profound reaction to oral IV, maybe like a Red Bull, you get energy, or yeah. I always say Viagra, even though it's inappropriate, but it, the reality is like some people are looking for that, and we don't provide that. So she kept thinking, well, there's no way oral IV is doing anything to me. So finally I said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you take oral IV for seven days straight, morning, noon, and night? And tell me then if your water consumption cuts down and if you're tired. And after seven days, she looked at me and she goes, I feel different and I'm drinking less water. So I think, I think it's about efficiency, not over just, you know, one thought process of it, but it's, it's, it's what your body gets accustomed to. But then you don't, like you said, don't force yourself to drink that gallon every day, maybe. Right. Start to wonder if you can balance it and get more efficient. And that's where I see a lot of the people that I talk to. And I talk to thousands of people about this, by the way. I was just at a trade show. I must have talked to a thousand people in two days. Right. Efficiency doesn't seem to be on anybody's mind. It's mostly about massive volume consumption. And I'm always like, well, what else are you doing? What else are you taking in? What else are you doing? And that's where you get into these things. And I, I'm getting a little bit off track, but I wanted to just say this so dr bev you, you can kind of like comfort uh anthony with the fact that yeah i mean everyone's been taught to drink a gallon of water a day but maybe you're already super hydrated maybe you can get 10 percent more out of your performance if you efficiently use your hydration as opposed to just volume you got it hey anthony says we're picking on you man and you're you know you're, you're not uh you're not uh, like uh sensitive and stuff yeah of course let's go I've seen your pecs, man. You can't be sensitive. So, <laughs> I think we all have. Yeah, he looks He looks like he's perfectly hydrated. I mean. Yeah. Well, no, the thing like is, is, that is that, too. What, what do you do uh, when you're on the courses and stuff like that? How much are you consuming there and why? Um, on course, pretty much nothing. Any sprints, supers, I don't bring a camel back or anything. I just haul ass. But if it's a mountain beast, like in the Northeast here, like Vermont or things like that, then yeah. I bring it back. Okay. Cool. I like that. That's getting better. All right. We're going to get into that. Anybody else want to sound off on uh, what, what they're doing and why? Yeah. Well, I actually um, have a question in regard to uh, I'm going to be doing my first beast in Vermont. Okay. So, like typically my hydration, like I drink water all throughout the day. Like I'm always on the go. Um, and I was always told that if your urine is yellow, that means you need to drink more until it's clear. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if that's accurate um okay. my pee is typically clear i don't know if that's too much information to say no it's but, cool um, hey listen i'm a doctor <laughs> you want me to talk about my poop i'll talk about my poop <laughs> <laughs> so and then for races like i just did the go rock 5k and and how long did that, take, did that take you to do it how long does that take you to complete well um i did it in 27 minutes but i had 22 pounds on my back okay so, my best 5K time was 24 minutes, I think. Okay. Do you drink any water anything. while you're doing that? No. Good girl. Um, but I just started taking oral IV recently, like past couple months. Uh -huh. So I just I just started taking like I didn't take any oral IV like during the during the gold rush, but I took I took one before and after because I felt like I wouldn't I didn't need it during that 5K. Um, but at, I took all my the first time in the, at the super um, at Blue Mountain. Okay. And I think that that helped me a lot. Hey, Chris, I hit stand by. Everybody, uh, mute your computer if you're not talking. So I just toggle it on and off so that we get that background up. There you go. It was Connor. Didn't want to call him out. <laughs> What's up, Connor? How you doing, brother? Wait, you just told him to mute it. I know. He waved. I got it. I got it. He's, then you he's, asked him a question. So right. Stop. You know, he, he's like Bob, he's like the guy who takes names when the teacher leaves the room. So, all right, Chris, well, here, here's the thing. We're going to get to those questions there. Uh, Jace, what about you, man? What do you do and why do you do it? Um, I usually I, – I work outside all day. I'm in the military, so I carry a camel back with me. I'll drink usually about three to four liters of water just because I'm at higher altitude. I live in Denver, so it's, I think, about 6,500 feet. Okay. So I'm usually about there. I'll usually take – if I start getting dehydrated, I'll take an oral IV uh, during the day, especially when it's 100 degrees out and I'm working in the asphalt. Like, So I'm probably about 200 degrees in my uniform. Nice. Um, 
and the military has always taught us, you know, uh, drink so much per hour, every hour, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, and my question for you is since on top of that and working out, how much water should I be intaking since I'm at a higher altitude? Yeah, I remember the back, you know, that's the whole thing. I grew up in Fayetteville, right, North Carolina. And uh, I've seen um, uh, the, the thing is, is um, what ends up happening is they want you to turn that canteen up and drink it. You know what I mean? They, yep. They're forcing people to do that kind of fun stuff. Um, hey, guys, here's what I'm going to do. If for some reason this uh, drops here in a second, because it's kind of going longer than uh, I think it was allowing me to here. What I'm going to do is, is I'll start another meeting. I'll post it back here and the link will be back in Facebook. Okay. Does everybody understand that? So if we have that drop off, I'll quickly reestablish it and we'll, we'll, we'll jump back in because it's kind of giving me like this 10 minute warning kind of crap. Okay. So here's the deal. Um, military definitely does that. They're wrong as rain. Um, and the, the ultimate question is, is what is the amount that I should drink? And it's the most simple and concise answer I can give everybody. It is thirst. Sprite got it right. Okay. Obey your thirst. That's it. Thanks for coming. I'm dropping the microphone. That's it. That's I mean, right. You're like waiting for something like profound. It's called ad libitum. If you have a desire to drink, I'm not talking about, Oh, I'm so thirsty. You know, I don't know if you guys watch the show like Naked and Afraid or Survivor, right? Okay, listen. What I'm, I'm going to get to that in just a second, but it's, we have innately built into us. Just like when you come out of your mother's womb, we don't have to be taught to cry. We don't, we're not taught to suck. We're not taught to be hungry. We're not taught to be thirsty. When we, when we need fluids, we will seek them out, Period. If you're drinking them in the absence of that, you're doing it out of habit and enjoyment. Now, if you want to do that, okay, that's cool and groovy, right? Because I enjoy yerba mate. I like a coffee. You know, I like some herbal teas and all kinds of fun stuff, right? And I make a magnesium bicarbonate water that I actually have more of an IV to. But the point is, you're, 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 you're leaning more towards watering down what's called the body electric. And you're lowering, okay, that bioelectrical potential. All right. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and tell each of you guys about two of my favorite books. Okay. One of them is this one, Waterlogged by Dr. Tim Noakes. It's a must for everybody who's an ambassador on the team. It's required reading. This will change your life forever. So you won't think that I'm just some, you know, crazy guy that came up with some magic powder. But, but if, you want, if you want the science and, get in the, and, and all that kind of fun stuff and charts and graphs and all that other kind of fun stuff, but you can get it. It's totally worth the 22 bucks that it is. The other one is called The Fourth Phase of Water by Gerald Pollack. Fourth Phase of Water. Those two books right there will really put you on the path to understanding fluid mechanics in the body and what they do. Okay? Really, really well. So here's the deal. Let me jump into a couple of things before this. Uh, I'm going to have I know it's going to reset here because it's only letting me do a half hour for some weird reason. Most of what people are doing as their hydration strategy is not based on the science. Now, everybody you know, gets that cloak, okay? Because, oh, well, Gatorade Sports Science Institute. What about all these other hydration places and so forth and so on? Well, the problem is, is, of course, if you are selling cars and you want to sell tires, if you want to sell tires... Right? You want to tell people, hey, you need to change your tires every 20,000 miles or 55,000. We all know we can get a little bit longer than that. The, the end point is, is this. I want people to have the highest levels of well-being and the greatest levels of performance. That's what Oral IV does. It actually encourages you to drink less water. So just like on the little vial it says, with 16 ounces of water. Okay? Now, the guidelines I'm going to share with you here in just a little bit is exactly that. Okay? Um, when you're consuming fluids, it works differently in everybody's body. It's all based upon what's going on with your own metabolics, right? Matching or coexisting in the environment that you're in, okay? So let me go ahead and do this. On that note, because Bob got kicked off, I'm going to close this out, make another one real quick, throw it up into, uh, into Facebook, okay, everybody? I'll see you back in just a second. Sorry for the technical difficulty. All right, so we'll just go ahead and end this. Beep. In. All right, cool. All right, guys, so let's pick back up. All right, so here's the point, because I want to go ahead and share the, uh, the, uh, the pearls of wisdom with, it, with you. 
So here's the deal. The first and foremost thing is I like to usually establish the fact that most people hydration and what they think about what they should consume has been given to them by media. Okay. Remember mute your, uh, mute your volume if you're not talking. So the thing about it is, is that <laughs> if you think about that, okay, that means that what you're getting is not based upon science studies or studies that included you much less had to match your biochemical individuality and genetics because those are huge parts in it okay because i'm going to tell you your genes have a lot to do with it there is a dynamic difference between those who have a y chromosome and those who do not it's the way it works it's not a chauvinistic thing it's a fact okay so the thing is is this what i like to have people realize okay is what dehydration, I like to kind of like confirm the term. When I talk dehydration, I'm not talking dehydration as defined by most people. They will usually define it, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, is you're dehydrated based upon things like the color of your pee and how much you weigh. Is that about right? In other words, if you lose, you've all heard this, if you lose 2% of your body weight, you're already impaired by whatever. You've heard that before? Well, that's completely not true, okay? The people who win marathons, like the, you know, short ones like the, you know, the Boston Marathon, the comrades in, in uh, South Africa and all that kind of fun stuff are the athletes who lose the most weight and have the highest rectal temperature. Now, how do we know their rectal temperature? Well, we're not stopping them and doing that. We just, we swallow this <laughs> device, okay? And it just, it Wi-Fi's, all right. So the thing is, is the key to your highest levels of physical performance is how close to the edge can you get and be comfortable there? That's what it is, okay? If you are a person who is acclimatized and you're used to drinking a bunch of water, okay, your body is going to, that's part of your training and you're going to be accustomed to that. If you're a carbohydrate adapted athlete versus a fat or a keto adapted athlete, you're going to want those damn goos while you're running. Why? Because your brain is going to demand that which you've conditioned it to do. It's like Pavlov's law. The bell rings, they started salivating, right? Probably heard that back in science. If you haven't, look it up. Pavlov's law. So the thing is, is what you train yourself to do is exactly what you're going to demand. If you like exactly how you're performing, we'll keep doing exactly what you're doing. But if you want to get better, if you want to increase your PR, if you want to get in exponentially more badass, well, you're going to have to come out of that, that comfort zone and train in a different way. Okay? Now, one of the things I'm going to show you just to prove a point, and I'm going to see how this comes up, is I'm going to do a, a screen share real quick. Okay? And so you guys should see this. See what this is? So somebody just sound off and say, I see it. I see it. Okay, I this see is it. a Seb cycle. I'm going to take you back to biology. Now, I promise, Bob, I, I won't ever get too techy, okay? But we're all adults here. You should know what this is. It's a citric acid cycle, the Krebs cycle, the TCA cycle, blah, blah, blah. When everybody's talking about proteins, fats, and carbs, this is how they come in. They make this little chemical called acetyl-CoA. Okay. And that is my parole officer calling me. <laughs> Just, yeah. All right. And then they go into this little eight cylinder engine called the citric acid cycle, the suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. That's for Jace. It's a military thing. You know, <laughs> engine. puts out something here. I want to show you guys something very interesting here that most people don't know. Okay. You see what this is right here? Okay. When you are manufacturing energy, your body will hold on a minute make its own damn water. It's a byproduct of your engine running. It's just like a car. You ever see it dripping out the tailpipe, making water? All right, your body does the same thing. You make water. We have way more ability to use water than what you think. The key is not its presence, but its function. I'll say that again. Not the presence, but its function, okay? Now, all these nutrients either help it grow, make it go, these go like, these stop it from happening. But this is the type of testing that I do for my athletes, right? We take a look at what's going on in their gut biome. I take a look at what's going on in their mitochondria, how they're burning carbs, how they're making energy, how they burn fats, okay? All kinds of fun stuff. Now, what's really cool about this one I use is because you see this person right here, okay? This person is making ketones and too much pyruvic acid. This is bleeding out in the urine. 
This is a person who is carb adapted. They happen to be an athlete, thin, female, and her performance is impaired. Not just because she uses medical cannabis. But anyhow, um, the thing about it is, is this is what happens. You don't, if you don't know what your mitochondria are doing, if you don't know what your amino acid status is, and you're taking these drinks, right, that are, um, will remain nameless because, you know, I'm trying to be, I'm not politically correct, but I don't have to, you know, bomb anybody. But they got other little plus signs on them, and they got other aids at the end of their name. You're messing with the body electric. You're messing with the metabolism of the body. And you start bumping in beta alanine. You start screwing that up. You start screwing up these amino acids in your urea cycle. Your body electric is going to be messed up. All right. So off of that, back to, back to this. The reason why I share that with you is because you must develop your own strategies based upon what you're doing, not beautiful marketing, not beautiful websites, and not cool colors and banners and all that stuff. Now, Oral IV is guilty of it to a degree because we're a damn business. It's just like freaking anything else. You know, like Whole Foods, boom, McDonald's, boom. We all have a brand. We want to share it with the world. You, you guys are rocking the brand, and I appreciate it. It's the niceness, okay? It feels really <laughs> good. But at the end of the day, we don't want to conflate things, and I, my ultimate goal is to get all of you guys being absolute standout badasses on these courses and let people know about it. So that's why Bob and I are invested in giving you this information. So hydration strategy, number one drink to thirst okay i'm gonna tell you i and i've been practicing functional medicine for over 20 years i work with tens of thousands of patients okay all kinds of i won't name drop because they haven't all authorized me to but at the end of the day i've never found a patient who is sodium deficient never not one why because the body has 60 to 70 thousand milligrams at any given time, at any given time, you have 60, 70 grams waiting to do its job. Nobody needs salt pills. Nobody, right? Now, the reason why I say nobody, I'm talking absolute, right, is because in order to ever have the negative effects of uh, uh, salt deficiency, you would have to literally be days without salt consumption, okay? I mean, I'm talking about, we're talking weeks with none. You got a ton. But people will oftentimes say, but what about all this sweat that I have all this salty sweat, right? That is not proof that you need salt or that needs to be replaced. That means you have an, a severe salt excess, okay? That's what it is. It's the body going, I don't want this shit. I don't want it. I got to get rid of it. And I'm going to tell you the science behind it. It's all in waterlogged by Dr. Tim Nose. He quotes it all. You can see it all for yourself because I'm not making this up as I go. Okay, I'm not a Democrat. But anyhow. Um, <laughs> hey, that's unfair. You can't do that. I, hey, it's my damn show. Oh, so it's... here's the deal. <laughs> the problem is, is that people don't realize that this catastrophe theory just doesn't exist. Okay? You cannot possibly fall out from dehydration or loss of water in three to four hours. It would take you over three days in the desert to ever technically have life-threatening dehydration. That's a fact, okay? I'll give you a thousand bucks if you show me a study otherwise. I already know all the studies, so if you try to quote them to me, try to get some cash, be prepared. I'd love to do it. I love to do it. So my point is, is this, you can't be, right? If you ever watch Naked and Afraid or Survivor, you know, people go days without that stuff in the heat and no one's dying. Naked and Afraid, 40XL, that's another one. Not in 40 days, it's a whole other deal. So don't think that you have to consume all this water. Don't think you have to consume so, much of salt. You have plenty of it in the body. The key is to okay. make it function. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Um, okay. okay, so those people on Naked and Afraid, if, if we use that example, they're not um, running at a high exertion trying to maintain that and trying to keep that going. So is there a difference between being able to survive versus trying to be at 100% of your optimum output? Mm -hmm. Is replacing anything helpful or like what, what would be your strategy then halfway through the race if say I, I felt like I was losing those things? 
Okay, my question to you would be, are you thirsty? Yes or no? Will you go with me, check one. If okay, you are thirsty, yes, I'm thirsty, then you need water. And okay, what, if water. I, what if I feel like I need potato chips because I need salt? What if I just feel that way? It's not true. Okay. No one does that, that you're either thirsty. No one goes, hmm, I'm craving salt. You'll crave carbohydrate because you're carb adapted, but you don't crave potato chips while you're on the thing. If you're thirsty, then drink, but then I'm going to talk okay. about how much you should consume. Okay. You, there's okay. no way it's physically in physics, impossible in any type of, 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 uh, except for like say, uh, 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 the death Valley, you know, the, the ultra marathon where they're going like 24 hours, you still don't need salt. And you can ask that from uh, Dr. Tim Noakes, who has run the comrades marathon multiple times and the quotes from the people who, the ladies who have the world record, you don't need the salt. <clears throat> You don't. You have plenty. That's the biggest thing I'm really trying to drive to let people know is you have plenty. You need water. And here's the thing. As you sweat out salt, it is identical milligram for milligram of your dietary excess. If you consume less salt, you'll have less salty sweat. The people who are salty sweaters are people who consume excess salt. It's that simple, right? What you want to do is, is when you desire fluid, to consume a certain amount, okay? Why? Because your intestines can only metabolize, bring in about 1,200 milligrams per hour. That's it. You can sweat over 3,000 milligrams an hour. We are built physiologically to almost three times the capacity to sweat out faster than we can pee it out. Isn't that something? Pretty awesome. And what does that yeah. tell us? I want to add something on top of that real quick. It's off of hydration, but I think it's important for everybody here is I listened to the Ben Greenfield uh, podcast and he said that a doc, a bunch of doctors just proved that the body can only can't take in more than 90 milligrams of carbohydrates per hour. And a lot of people that run triathlons and long races are taking bars and they're overdoing the amount of carbs that they're putting in their system and it's causing them to have backups and stomach aches and cramping yeah. and all sorts of stuff so it's not just hydration it's actually your whole strategy so nutrition plays a huge part in this whole thing as well yeah well um and i appreciate Isn't that i appreciate that however ben and the data just presented is actually incorrect um i can even tell you the the, the studies if you want to look it up um Basically, it was Gentings and Underwood in, in uh, 2006. It's actually 1.7 grams per minute. And the, and the rate limiting factor was the amount of fluids consumed with the carbohydrate. He now, mentioned you know, a lot of that. So I think okay, yeah, okay, it's, cool. probably, it's probably so In other close. words, the 90 grams an hour kind of thing, um, it's pretty close. But the point is, is this, what the rate limiting factor is the amount of fluids. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That brings okay. me to the next thing I was going to talk about is – you'll hear people talk about these SGLT enzymes, right? These sodium dependent glucose transporters, not to get too techy, but they are stimulated in the gut by taste. So what we have found now is that you could put carbohydrate in your mouth, taste it, spit it out, not even consume it, and you'll get the same performance enhancement. It's the same thing with salt. Spit it out, same effect. Okay, so the key here is to understand that everything is electrical. Now, what started this whole conversation, one of the reasons why I want to do this was because I believe it was Aaron, and of course he's not here, no show. Um, the thing about it is, is it comes down to cramping, okay? Cramping has nothing to do with sodium balance. Nothing. It has to do with other factors, okay? It has to do with your metabolism. The way that your body sends signals from the brain and spinal cord, okay, to the thing. Because if it was low serum sodium concentration, riddle me this. Why is it the exact same muscle that always cramps? And remember, everybody gets the same blood. Why isn't your ass cramping? Why isn't your pec cramping? Why isn't your tricep cramping, right? What about your frontalis? Well, mine doesn't cramp because of Botox, right? But here's the deal, okay? 
It's not because of low blood sodium. Why? Because they've, the, the science has absolutely shown that people that are crampers are crampers. The reason why you're cramping is because of the shit diet that you're on. Because you're consuming certain molecules that are in products, which will remain nameless, but they have fancy stuff on them. That's actually impeding those graphs that I just showed you. Okay? They taste delicious, but they're sodas. If you look at the ingredients, it's just like a can of Coca-Cola. Virtually the same, except for they have malic acid. They have citric acid, which is, is not from citrus. But the point is, is this. I want you to take home a couple of things. Drink to thirst. When you do consume fluid, make it about 16 ounces, about 400 to 500 milliliters per time, per hour. Okay? Give it time. And I'm going to tell you about that because we're going to bring it back to oral IV, of course. But the thing is, is never consume more. I don't care who you are. I don't care your body weight. I don't care how hot you are or whatever. Do not consume more than a liter to 1,200 milligrams an hour. You will get exercise-associated hyponatremia, period. Your body can't bring it in, okay? It, it just, it, it's just going to sit in there. And, it's, and what happens is, is when you put fluid into the intestines, the body takes sodium and floods it in there to bring that water in. When you put in glucose or sugars in there, right, they're big carbon, hydrogen, oxygen molecules, CHOs, carbohydrates. They're very um, uh, waterphilic. They love water. They suck up water, right? So they're kind of like a, you know, like a fat dude wanting some you know, good-looking chicks to come up in the club. And if that's okay, well, then you can come in. So that's what happens, okay? Your body floods sodium into the intestines to bring the water in and the glucose. If you do that, you will cramp. Mama taught you that. Don't go swimming unless, after you've eaten for an hour. Why? Because all that blood and stuff and all that sodium goes in the intestines to pull it in. So it's pulling it from the periphery. Make sense? That's the riddle. If you are a cramper, it's, it's because of number one, your um, uh, low arc muscles are, have not been elongated, you haven't been stretching properly, and you're carb adapted, and you're most likely sodium overloaded. And you're, oh, you're blowing up water and you're swelling up. If ever you have, you know, we, we, I'm an athlete too, but I don't like to run because it's just, it's going to sell. I'm not Forrest Gump. If you ever get sausage fingers, you know, if you ever, you're puffy, you cannot be dehydrated, period. Remember, three days in the desert before you'd ever do it. Now people go, but my performance is going to be impaired. That's not true. Talk to those little Kenyans that win every damn thing. They always lose 20% of their body weight and they have the highest <laughs> rectal temperature. That's what you want to do. I want to push you to the limit and get you there. Okay. So the hydration strategy, again, drink when it comes to thirst, when you're consuming, keep it to four to 500 milliliters per hour, maximum 800, depending upon where you're at. Okay. That's it. <clears throat> the next thing is, is stay away from carbohydrates and goos. Unless you're carb adapted, we need to work and get you off of that. And if you do do that, Never put more than 60 grams in there into that 1,000 liters that you'll drink over time. That's a 10% glucose solution. The science says 6%. It's more efficient. But I say you don't even need the damn thing. If you're running any, any of these type of Spartan races and you're, you're less than three hours, you don't need any water and you don't need any glucose. If you do, you need to train differently. You need to eat for your metabolic type. Are you a slow oxidizer, fast oxidizer, mixed oxidizer? What's your mitochondria doing? What's your fatty acid status? Dr. You know those things I can help you. But where oral IV comes into play, guys, is, is this. It helps water work more efficiently because it's imparted in, by its manufacturing process with a charge potential that increases the body's bioelectrical potential, Right. So if you go to the fourth phase of water book by Pollock, I was telling you about, he'll talk about what we call exclusion zone water, EZ water, okay? There is on the outside of the membrane a positive charge, inside membrane is a negative charge. I tell people you got to get negative. Stop being so damn positive, right? So what happens is, is when you have consumption of carbohydrates and consumption of salts while you're running, that exclusion zone gets smaller and you have more viscosity of the fluids whipping through your vascularity you want to push that away now what they've done is is they put a they put an electrode in that space and on the outside and they can literally produce electricity you make your own electricity from the dipole that's in there 
Oral IV helps the body increase its bioelectrical potential at the membrane and cellular level by expanding the exclusion zone. That's what it does. So don't consume things that thwart that. So if you're getting goose and taking salt and you're taking oral IV and saying, well, that didn't work for me, it's because you're messing it up, right? It's like that person that, you know, wants to put all that stuff in the soup. No, nah, man, we're just make, we're making potato soup. I don't need tomatoes in there, okay? So that's the biggest take home is try to get to where you are in your training to where you consume the least amount of fluids that you're desiring and don't flood the body with, with B vitamins and amino acids and beta alanine and all this other kind of crap that the body has to metabolize because here's the deal. <clears throat> Those sugars that you're eating now do not go to work right away. Your body's muscle demand uses glycogen, the storage form of carbohydrate or glucose, okay? You have to remember, you put that stuff in your stomach, it now has to wait in there until the body's ready. There's a certain factor of what we call gastric emptying. Then it has to go into the small intestines. Then the body has to flood it with sodium. Come on in, guys. Then it brings it there. Then it has to go to the portal vein, has to head over to the liver. The liver has to metabolize it and then give it back to us. That takes time. If you're running a race, guess what? You don't have time to get all of that. It's a waste of time. You won't get it for a, at minimum an hour and a half later. That's right. You'll get a little bit because like if you're a diabetic and your blood sugar's dropping, and you put some honey in your mouth, your blood sugar goes up just a little bit. Well, of course. Okay. But when it comes to fueling your muscles, it cannot be done in the time that you're running a race. Make sense? Well, and I think, I think it's really important to remember, too, that as ambassadors, as these athletes um, that we are for Oral IV, it's important to remember that a lot of people do things on race day that they never do every day. Like, they don't train that way. They don't take it. It's really important to remind people that what you do leading up to a race your training, your nutrition, everything, that's what's going to make the difference, including taking oral IV. Like, you got it. 100%. People, think, people think they can buy like a four pack and be like, oh, I'm covered for the trifecta weekend when that's not how it works. No. And that's a huge misconception. So it's really, really important to remember that it's something you need to be taking consistently mm -hmm. and training consistently. Like, for example, on race day, my nutrition, my um, water intake, none of it changes. Like, it's exactly the same like I do every single day. I wake up, drink a glass of water, go about my day eating, you know, my macros, and then I end the day with a glass of water. There's no, there's no huge consumption. Um, and that's something that I really talk to people about. Like, don't expect a hype. Don't expect um, a huge change. Like, yeah, I'll carry one on course. Um, in case, you know, I don't know, I want to talk to someone about it, but genuinely I take them every day and that's what makes the difference. And that does. And I really appreciate you saying that, Megan, that's the bomb.com. So that's the whole thing. What you want to do is you want to, you want to acclimatize your body to have very efficient water function, right? So your body, you, technically we talk about how much of the body is water, but technically it's not water. This is where I was, you know, kind of. Side, side swipes by a dude on a freaking podcast when I was like, well, there's no water in the body, right? Is urine water? No. Is blood water? No. Cerebral spinal fluid water? No. But are they comprised of water? Yes. So the point is, I love water. That's why Oral IV is water's wingman, okay? But the fact remains, I wish it was just water. It's not. There's a whole bunch of other things in your blood, in your pee, in your cerebral spinal fluid. It's more than that. The electrolytes are really important to understand, okay? They lose their charge. When you're running and you're, you're exerting your muscles and cranking that citric acid cycle, you're depolarizing, repolarizing, and your muscles, that's what happens, okay? It's literally switches going click, 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 right? Positive and negative. And if, if that starts to overheat and not work efficiently, okay, because of fluid metabolism being overburdened, by inappropriate metabolic function, hormones, and some other things, you're going to not have the performance that you want. It should be really simple to understand that. So when I talk, just like Maggie was saying about using the product, the thing about it is, is you want to make sure that when you're training that you're utilizing that in your water volume, okay? Because I can tell you this, where you know you're going to be dialed in is one of those ampules for that 16 ounces of water 
however you use it, okay? If you be become thirsty, you have a desire to consume fluid, either during your exertion or after, then have another vial, make that water work more efficiently in the body and lend its bioelectrical potential to the body. That's how you do it. But you definitely need to do it while you're training. You need to do it prior to going into the course and then in your recovery. That's what I was talking about in my video, right? Because you, your body remembers and it adapts. It gives back to you a lot of hormonal feedback over time based upon how you treat it, okay? So that's the biggest key is to understand that it works with water to make its function more efficient, okay? What you want to avoid to get the most out of oral IV is to not put the things in there that thwart its magic. Salts, these artificial B vitamins that you see in these products and stuff like that that are made from coal tar. We can talk about that on another topic one day if you want. Or these sugars. That's really what it is. They are impeding you. What you should be doing is eating healthful, clean foods in the macros correct for your metabolic tendency. Then your body will work far more efficient. Does that make sense? Any questions on any of that, guys? Oh, I do. I have a question. Go, Maggie, go. Okay, okay. So um, obstacle course racing, pretty much every series you're going to have has beer at the end. Yeah. They have their logic to it. They have the appeal. Um, I've, had, I've heard a lot of people say that, oh, when I add it in my beer, I recover faster. <laughs> I feel like... Obviously, to me, that's never made sense. Um, the, only, the only logic may be if, you're, if you've been taking oral IV consistently with your stuff, like maybe your body is just functioning better to flush out those toxins. But as a selling point, yeah. um, we, I feel like, need to be careful because... Look, the cap... I see where you're going, if I can interject. Um, the cap <laughs> yeah. in me... Of course, it sells my product, but I, I'm honest, man. That's the whole thing. At the end of the day, that's complete and utter bullshit, right? You're Sorry, Bob. Beer too. I'm, I can't wait to be in Tahoe with all you guys that are going. It's going to be the best time, okay? Drinks all your beast. But the thing is, is it doesn't work like that, okay? But, okay, I want to really avoid that kind of stuff because what ends up happening is, is we give the wrong message. I don't want to afford people the thought that you could do things that are harmful to the body. Listen, I'm from North Carolina. I drink beer and whiskey, okay? But I'm the healthiest person out of anybody on this call. I guarantee it because I do my shit, right? I'm 43 years old. <laughs> I, I take these. Oh, the camera out. must be fuzzy. I know, right? That's what I was about to say. All right. So, I know. No, that and both. But anyhow, the thing is, is guys, is um, I, I want you to really understand that its function works on water, okay? And I don't want you to – don't water down the product, in other words, consuming too much water. But yes, you can put it in your Camelback, right? But I can tell you this, that's about the number. Three to four hours, you don't need anything. You just don't. I would encourage you to train without it. If you have the sensation of thirst during that time, you yes, you can consume fluids. But here's what I would like you to experience. I just want you to take a vial by itself, no additional water. Each time within that four hour period of time, if you just hit that, and it hits that electrical potential, baby, I'm gonna tell you, that's the magic zone. If it's not enough, then consume some water, stay about 400 to 500 milliliters, okay? That's that 12 to 16 ounce kind of deal. That makes sense? So that's how you really wanna leverage and use the product when it comes to that. Coolness? Hey, going back real quick to uh, the beer question from a different angle. Okay. Um, if about eight minutes. If you drank a couple beers after the race and the next morning you felt a little groggy, taking oral IV and drinking water, it's going to help with the uptake and utilization of that water to recover faster. That's Am true. I wrong? That part is true, yes. That okay, so spread right, that. And that's what I was saying, though. Yep. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah, make no mistake about it. Yeah. And that's the key, you know. I, use, I, I rarely ever take water with the, with the vial. I use the vial to do what it does. Yeah. I just wanted to ideas. clarify, like – I, like Bob, I totally agree with you. Like if you've been taking oral IV and you feel hungover the next day and your body's sluggish, you take it again, your body's going to react to it like it should, you know, like it's been accustomed to. But for those of us that are not taking it or the new people that we're trying to talk to, to start getting accustomed to it, we cannot say, Hey, it's a hangover cure. Take it with, you know, take it with beer or whatever. And you will be golden in the morning because they're going to feel that we're liars because we are unless your body has been taking it so like i just wanted to clarify that not to say 
don't advertise it with the whole beer concept like no that's a good business ploy but sure. make sure to say that after you've been taking it your body has been accustomed to it it'll make your body run more efficiently so that if you have a wild night you will feel better by taking it you know in the morning blah 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 that's awesome. just what i was trying to say perfect i think we're perfectly clear well done now here's the thing about alcohol it's the perfect fuel if it's pure acetate. It's pure acetate. If you, you know, you like an alcohol burn lamp or something like that, it burns clean. If it, if it had minerals and it didn't intoxicate the liver, I would live off of alcohol. It is the perfect damn fuel, except for those two things. So if you're consuming alcohol, you are over revving that engine. You're doing the very similar thing as if you're drinking these AIDS drinks. That's exactly what's happening. Okay. As a matter of fact, if you have yeast overgrowth, you're actually auto intoxicating your body because of the candida and stuff like that. Cause you got a bad microbiome cause you're eating all them bars and crap. You're not eating right. Well actually manufacture alcohol in the blood. And you're kind of going around with a little bit of buzz all the time. Clinically. Um, I see that, especially if you're not pooping two to three times a day, every day, ladies. Said poo -poo. Hey, I know I always got to come back to the crappy conversation, right? <laughs> all right. I'm a doctor. You can't take me out of it. All right. So anyhow, guys, that's the whole thing on that. Um, I'm going to uh, compile these into uh, these two calls into a, uh, into a one homogenous video. I'm going to put them together and I'll post it. There'll be a link you guys can watch through it. Um, we'll have more of these because one of the things that Bob and I have decided to do is be very dedicated to the means of you guys who are repping the brand to make no mistake about everybody that's out there going, damn, they got that little plus sign drop. They're rucking ass. They must be something be going. So we're invested in it far more than that. So if you guys have some questions about your routines and things of that nature, shoot a note to me, okay? And I'm here to support you, okay? Does that make sense? You don't have to be at the yeah. and We can assess some stuff because that was the last thing I talked about in the video was the fact that you guys are also doing well. You're like a NASCAR, right? Everybody wants to put their sticker on you. I don't blame them, you know, capitalism for the win. However, it will oftentimes come down to a scruples, okay? I would encourage you not to sell out and make a better, make, make a better decision because certain products that are out there will impede the benefits of oral life. That's just the way it goes, okay? And instead of ripping them out on video, if you want to ask me, I'll tell you candidly, I'm not being politically correct because that ain't me. But at the end of the day, I just want to be, you know, be correct and, and answer your questions and things like that because you'll get these questions too. Does that make sense? All right, guys. We'll see you later. Yeah. Blue Man Group for the win. I love his flexing, man. He's got some good flexing. Not that, you know, not that, you know, I'm straight and all. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. He's not even on the live feed. Hey, he just has Anthony. a picture going on right now. <laughs> I know. It's, it, it's, bro, it's bro love. I love you too, Meg. I appreciate your stuff. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Look at my little biscuit. See? You know? <laughs> but don't think that I'm some fat bastard back here too trying to pimp some stuff. I get my jack on. One of these days, I'm going to come out and get busy with you guys. <laughs> but look out. 43. I'm going to be in the Masters. We'll see you at Worlds then. Yeah, we'll see you in time. Well, I'll be there. I ain't yeah. running it. Oh, but, uh, Ooh, but I, I, I ran the uh, San Francisco one. No, Anthony, what is on your wall? Is that like a little starship? The Alpine sticker. What's that? Yeah, he knows. Aww. Alpine Star. It's a it's, company. Yeah, it's motocross or uh, motorcycle. Oh. oh, I thought you were talking about me. I was like, what's that? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, yeah, like, what are you talking about? That. That <laughs> Sorry. I saw that. Oh, yeah. Star Wars for the win, man. It's all about the yeah. Empire. That's it. <laughs> uh, it's your magic juice. All right, guys, I'm clicking this in meeting button. Go in there and oh, I missed the whole meeting. Out. I would have, I would have hoped we had some yeah, more. Aaron. Bye. Oh. All right, thanks, nice yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye.